Hello, I'm Deborah Ephraimson, the author of Beyond Apologies, Defining and Achieving an Economics of Well-Being. Many of us are working to improve education, health, the environment, to help the poor, or to improve the situation of the most vulnerable. But when we do so, we hear many objections, that saving the environment will cost jobs, that we must keep environmental protections minimal to attract foreign direct investment, that our focus should always be on increasing GDP and on economic growth. We hear that economics is a technical issue that must be left to the experts. We see all kinds of difficult words, amortization, bounded rationality, diseconomies of scale, hypothecation, net present value, revealed preference, tax arbitrage. When we see these words, we think that we cannot possibly understand economics. We also see all kinds of complicated formulas that are used to explain things, or should we say, to confuse us. This leaves us in a state of complete confusion, and we often believe that economics needs to be kept in the hands, as I said, of the experts. And yet, as Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you simply don't understand it well enough. Either the economists don't understand their issues, or they don't want for us to understand them. This leads me to a few basic facts about economics. First, despite what the economists would have us believe, it is not a science like biology, chemistry, or physics. In a true science, we are allowed to ask questions, and if the evidence does not support what people have told us, then we know that it's not true. In economics, we are asked to believe things despite the lack of evidence. This makes economics not a science, but a religion. No matter how complicated the formulas are that economists use, they are only as good as the assumptions on which they are built. While we might be afraid to learn more about economics, it actually affects all of us. It even affects our ability to survive on the planet. It is thus not safe to leave economics in the hands of a few biased, prejudiced experts. In my book, I discuss 13 myths about economics. I'm just going to talk about a few of them here. To learn the rest, you can read my book. One of the myths is that poverty can be measured in dollars per day, that if you only have one or two dollars a day, you're desperately poor. This suggests that with, say, five dollars a day, people would be fine. It also suggests that the only kind of poverty is material poverty and ignores things like social or experiential poverty. We all hear, we all often believe that GDP, gross domestic product, is a useful measure of how a country is doing. In fact, it is no such thing. It simply tells us how much production is happening. That production could be of harmful and destructive things. We constantly hear that we need economic growth. What we don't always realize is that economic growth could simply be measuring the growth in environmental destruction or the growth in the arms trade, not the growth in people's well-being. We hear that there is no relation between inequality and poverty, that it's fine to have some billionaires, while so many people are left with almost nothing. In fact, with limited resources on our planet, the number of billionaires does contribute to mass poverty, and the only way we can improve the situation for the masses is by reducing wealth at the very top. We hear that the private sector is more efficient than governments. This ignores, among other things, the fact that companies are constantly turning to their governments for all kinds of subsidies. We hear that we cannot yet afford to worry about health and the environment, that we first need to improve the economy. The fact that we hear this even in a country as rich as the United States should make it clear that the day will never come when the economists tell us that it's time to worry about health or the environment. We also must question, after we've damaged both of them, how much we can actually restore them. We believe that mass media provides us with good information, that the news, for instance, tells us what is going on in the world. In fact, the news tells us what a few very rich people or corporations or governments want us to know. A few more facts about economics. Despite what we may believe and what we may have experienced if we've taken a traditional economics class, it's actually an interesting and exciting subject that reveals new possibilities of what we can do for our environment and for our people. It gives us strength and power to work for positive change. And we absolutely must learn some basics about economics if we want to move to a better place. In order to move on, we must take seriously the words of Mahatma Gandhi that it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. We must begin to put people and nature before profits. 
In order to do so, we must identify some of the myths that we hear about economics. We must work to counter them. We must offer something better and work to achieve it. How are we going to do this? Well, I would suggest one place to start is to read my book, Beyond Apologies. I discuss how to do all of this in my book, Beyond Apologies, which you can download for free at various websites. When we work together, when we develop more understanding about economics, then we can achieve the better world that we all must know inside is possible. Mm -hmm.